Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another one of my Mythic Mobs tutorials. I know you've been waiting a while because last time I just covered all the basics, but this time we are getting into some more advanced stuff. So, how are we going to do this? Well, today we're going to be talking about um, multi-phase bosses. That's right, this is kind of a big deal, but I tried my best to break it down for you into three simple ways that you can do this. Um, of course, we're going to start off kind of basic, and we will get more complicated as we go, but that's what I am here to show you guys how to do. So first off, what I have for you is how to use phases um, on death. So what, what I have here, you can see I have three different bosses going on, but they're all the same if you look really closely at them, and their skills all match up. Some in second phase, some in third phase, end phase. Now, what that means is these are predefined skills that I made to um, make sure the next boss spawns when the first one uh, dies. Now, this could be helpful for multiple bosses, like in one fight. It doesn't exactly look great if you're wanting to use the exact same boss, but it still gets the point across and still works. Now, let me show you here. What I did was I added a particle that gives off colors that correlates directly to which level of intensity it is. And normally, the first phase is always going to be the easiest. So I made him green. And if you look here, I have the essentials formatting for it too, which is and A. So let me go ahead and um, flip back on over here. So here we have a green color. When it dies, it's going to summon the second phase of the boss, which is boss 2, which again, as you can see, is exactly the same. So, let's go ahead and get started and show you that. So as you can see above his head, I have a bright green display saying first boss. Pretty easy. Let's go ahead and finish him off here. And, poof, as you can see, green particles appeared showing his death. Now we have second boss, which is a yellow bar above his head, or sorry, display above his head. So whenever he dies, yellow particles, and third boss, which is red, which is obviously going to be the highest intensity. And when he dies, poof. Now like I said, that way doesn't exactly look the best, however it is still a viable option. If that is something you want to do in order to prolong a fight, then I, by all means I suggest going for it. However, there are more efficient ways or better looking ways that you can do this. Okay, next we have boss phases using stances. So as you can see I changed it up and kind of removed the other boss mobs from the thing, and I added a new set of skills. Here we have the set stance mechanic. First, second, third. Let me go ahead and break this down for you. So, whenever he spawns in, he's going to set his stance to a stance we call first. This can be any name you want. However, I like keeping it in chronological order, first, second, third, and naming it in such a way that you can tell in which order it's supposed to go. So, after he sets himself to first, whenever you damage him and get him to 66% health, he is going to switch into his second phase. And lastly, whenever you get him to 33% health, he is going to switch into his third phase. I do want to note, you can make this go on as long as you want, and you can divide it as much as you want. However, I think three phases for a boss is generally fine. Next, you'll see below we have three different skills going on here. First phase, second phase, third phase. Well, how does it know which one to go for? Well, that's easy. So. What we have here is the first stance that it sets, which we named first. In our skills, we added conditions to match up with what, uh, what stance it's in, which I forgot to switch here. Okay, so now that we have it set up, it's going to look for whichever stance meets the condition that we have set. So since he sets himself to first whenever he spawns, it's going to look for the first stance. Since it's set to true here, it is going to be giving off green particles. So let me go ahead and show you that. Boss. Okay. So as you can see, he's giving off green particles. As I mentioned, when we get him to 66% health, he is going to switch to his second stance. So let's go ahead and get him down. Okay. 
Now he's below 66% health, and you can see the particles are yellow. That's going to be the case with the red ones as well. As you can see, he's below 33% health, and it's indicated by the red particles shown. And each time he reached those thresholds, he used a new stance. So an easy way to do this as well is you don't even need to use stances. However, I think they help for more compact and more complicated mechanics. But if you just want a simple boss, then none of this is actually even necessary. So let's go ahead and delete these, and I'll show you what we're going to do here. So, as you can see now, he's going to use all of his uh, skills at the same time. We're going to want to remove the conditions part of our skills here as well. Okay. Now then, what we're going to do is add health variables. So we're going to do equals, actually, yeah, equals, no, greater than 66%. Next, we're going to do equals 33% to 66%. And lastly, we will do less than 33%. Now, it's very important to know that the smaller one does have to be first. Uh, if you're doing, like, through values like this, anywhere within that range, I'm not sure why that is, but uh, that's just how it is. So, smaller variables must come first. And let's go ahead and talk about the rest. The reason you're going to want to make these numbers be the, uh, match up with the middle ones is because when it's greater than 66, that means it's counting 67 and above. When it's counting equals 33 through 66, it literally stops at 33 and 66. And when it's less than 33, that means it's counting 32 and below. So, if we go ahead and set that up and reload, you will see that it works exactly the same as before, but without the use of stances. As you can see, he's now within 33 to 66, the second phase. And now he's below 33% in the last phase. Let's go ahead and kill him off. Now the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is using a timer. So what we're going to do, we're going to set up a new thing here called mob score. So we're going to type in modify mob score objective equals boss life. You can name this whatever you want, but do know it has to be less than 15 characters, because that is how the game predefined it, and anything more than that will cause it to not work. You can name it whatever you want, but again, less than 15 characters. Next, the action. We're going to go ahead and uh, type in A equals at, and then value equals 1. We're going to do this at self on timer of 20. Now this is going to cause him to add a new um, value to himself every second. So this is going to basically tell us how long he's been alive for. Uh, just to kind of debug it, we're going to add a thing here called action message. M equals lifetime dash mob dot score dot boss life. At players and radius r equals 20 on timer. Timer. 20. Okay, so basically what this does, I want to talk about this first. Um, the capitalization has to be exactly the same here and here. If you're using a notepad editor like I am, it'll highlight green if they are the same, uh, and then you'll be good. But they do have to be exactly the same capitalization and everything. And we're going to go ahead and save here. We're going to go ahead and remove these health variables, because we don't need the, them for this timed-based one. Now this is going to be if you want your mob to get stronger over time. Say the fight's going on for way too long, you're getting kind of tired of players fighting and you just, you want them to either get better and finish it off, or it will do the same thing to them. What we're going to do is come back over to our skills page. We're going to go to condi er, add conditions, conditions, score. Now we're going to go ahead and type in here, obj, or objective, equals boss, boss life, which is what we uh, added, value equals less than 10, so that way when it's anywhere from 0 to 9, it is going to unleash green particles. We're going to go ahead and copy and paste this real quick, just to make it a little faster. Next, we're going to do a different thing here. So we're going to do value equals 10 to 19, 
This is how you would set it up if you were using a, a condition because you cannot use the dashes like we did in the health thing as a condition. You have to use two instead. So whenever he has a lifetime of 10 to 19, he is going to use yellow particles. And last, we're going to go ahead and set this up for the third phase. We're just going to go ahead and do greater than 19. I realize I switched, did this wrong. We're going to switch that over. Um, okay, so whenever he has a score above 19, basically 20 or more, he is going to give off red particles. We'll be able to see that in our action bar in a moment. So as you can see right there, he has a number going up that we specified, and it goes up for each second that he unleashes particles. You can see he just switched into a second phase as 10 seconds went by. Do know you can make this as long as you want. And last third phase after 20 seconds have passed, making this be his strongest phase. So as I was saying, you can make this last as long as you would like. However, I wanted to keep it shorter for the sake of this tutorial, but you can make it up to a full minute, two minutes, three minutes, an hour, I don't care what. That's up to you. But that's basically the gist of how to use the timer one. That's all I've got for you guys today as far as how to make a multi-phase boss. If you like this tutorial, make sure to like and subscribe, and uh, make sure to stay tuned because I will have some more tutorials coming out. Maybe just as advanced as this one, maybe not. Who knows? But, uh... Yeah, make sure to stick around, subscribe, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with in the future.